up next on Hudson Church. The fear that the enemy tries to put on you, the bad, the negative, the unpleasant feeling, God's like, no, 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 no. Put your fear in me. Respect me. Revere me. Be in awe of me. Amen. Glory to God. Um, so the title for today's message is Fear of the Lord. Now, just to make it clear, this is fear that we should have for the Lord. So the fear of the Lord. And this morning I was led to start with a, a, a little bit of a history lesson. Um, and I believe it's important because as time passes, we tend to forget um, of certain events that occur in our country. And we, um, I also believe it's important uh, for the young generation to know uh, of the American history, of the things that occurred in the past, because unfortunately they're not being taught that. And, um, you know, they need to be taught to have respect for the United States of America. Amen. Glory to God. And thirdly, um, you know, it's really important for us to remember this day because when hardships occur, when hard times occur, I believe that is the opportunity for believers to show the hand of God, the power of God, in Jesus' name. So 21 years ago today will never be forgotten. September 11, the September 11 attacks, also known as 9-11, when four coordinated suicide terroristic Attacks occurred in the United States of America. Here, 19 terrorists directed by the Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden hijacked four commercial airliners mid-flight while traveling from the northeastern U.S. to California. Their goal, the hijackers' goal, was to crash the plane in prominent American buildings. Three of those four airliners succeeded. One hitting the Pentagon, causing a partial collapse at the side of the building. The other two crashing into the north and south tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. Both 110 stories towers collapsed within an hour and 42 minutes. And that is pretty astonishing because of the way these buildings were structured. The fourth airliner, flying in the direction of Washington, D.C., never made its de destination, crashing into a field in Stony Creek Township, Pennsylvania. The passengers of that plane were alerted of the previous attacks and attempted to regain the aircraft from the hijackers to prevent it from crashing into its intended target. Investigators determined that the flight's target was either the U.S. Capitol or the White House. Now, regardless of your viewpoints, regardless of what you believe on why or how this happened. On this day, 21 years ago, 2,977 people lost their lives. 
And my guess is we had a few brothers and sisters in Christ in there. Over 25,000 people were injured. And one of the motivations for these attacks by Al-Qaeda is that the U.S. supported Israel. Many evacuations, many closings, many cancellations followed out of fear. Out of fear of further attacks. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, out of fear. And so I start this message in explaining this historical event because I, as a 15-year-old, remember that day vividly. I remember where I was. I remember the emotions. I remember the confusion. I remember the faces. I remember the bravery, but I also remember the terror. And I also remember the fear. Now, fear is typically a word correlated in something negative, right? Like the events that occurred on 9-11-2001. The word fear is defined as unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger, anxious concern, or unpleasant alarm. But it is also noted that fear means profound reverence and awe, especially toward God. Interesting, in the dictionary, they make sure that the first definition is the negative one. And the one that's directed to God is always at the bottom, the third or the fourth. But we see that there are two very different meanings to this word fear. One that is negative, unpleasant and bad, and another that is positive. It means to show deep respect for, admiration, reverence, awe for God. Now the unpleasant one the word of God directs you to not let it affect you. I'm going to say that again. The negative, unpleasant meaning of that word fear, the feeling, the word of God directs you to not let it affect you. The word of God tells you do not fear, do not be afraid, do not be troubled. Fear not. Why? Because he is God. Now, after saying all of this, I wanted to lay this foundation. We are going to start here in a scripture verse in Acts chapter 19. And before we get there, Nicole, this is an important chapter for you to read on your own time as believers. Read Acts chapter 9 in its fullness. Learn about Saul's conversion. Also known as the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, by the way. You see, the reason I'm emphasizing this is because Saul once brought fear upon believers by persecuting them. And in reality, he was persecuting Jesus. 
when Jesus showed himself to Paul on the road to Damascus, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? We got to stop taking this so personal, Hudson Church. When people persecute you because of your faith, they're not persecuting you. They're persecuting Jesus. They're speaking against Jesus. You are a follower of Christ. You are a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah. You are a part of the body of Christ. When they go after you, they're going after Jesus. Just to make that clear. Saul, a.k.a. Paul, in prison and witness and even agreed to believers being murdered. But what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for good. The fear that the enemy tries to put on you, the bad, the negative, the unpleasant feeling, God's like, no, 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 no. Put your fear in me. Respect me. Revere me. Be in awe of me. And watch me turn this thing around. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And as I was meditating on this verse, we're about to read. The church stood out. The church. And I say something this morning, I say it with respect. And I say it in the power of the Holy Spirit. The church is diminishing in the fear of the Lord. You see pastors giving up. You see churches closing down because fear of rather than fear in God. Acts chapter 9 verse 31 in the New Living Translation, Nicole. And it says here, the church then had peace. And this is after Paul's conversion. And he was brought to the apostles who were afraid of him. And they saw his conversion. They saw him preaching boldly the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says, the church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Sam Samaria. And it became stronger. And it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. The church became stronger as believers lived in the fear of the Lord. I asked this question this morning, and I hope as a church we answer this with sincerity. That we answer this honestly. Are we living in the fear of the Lord? Again, this is not a fear that we are scared of God or terrorized by him. He's not a tyrant. This is a fear, a deep respect of who he is. God Almighty. The great I am, the creator of the world, the one who made you in his image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This fear is a reverence and an awe of who God is. 
Are we living continually in the fear of the Lord? The word of God teaches us, if we do, we become stronger as a church. But if we don't, I'm sure you guys can fill in the blank. church diminishes out of fear. Turn to your neighbor and say, out of fear. fear. The wrong type of fear. If we want to grow, we need to live in the fear of the Lord, Hudson Church. So I want everyone to read this next chapter. We're going to read it in its fullness. We've read it in the past. We're going to read it again. Psalm 111, verses 1 through 10. Are you guys excited to read this? It says, praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart. As I meet with his godly people. Stop. Thank you, Pastor, for that applause. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. Do you really? Are you coming in here murmuring, complaining, disgusted with one another? The word of God instructs us, I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. Verse 2. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord! Exclamation point! Wake up! How amazing are the deeds of the Lord! All who delight in him should ponder them. Verse 3. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. Verse 4. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 5, he gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. 6, he has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. Glory to God. Verse 7, all he does is just and good. All he does is just and good. Good and all his commandments are trustworthy. Glory to God. They are forever true. Verse 8 to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. Verse 9 He has paid a full ransom for his people. And I say, Thank you, Jesus. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. Thank you, Jesus. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 10, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom, Hudson Church. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise him forevermore. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
Proverbs chapter 1. I love this. It says, verse 1, These are the Proverbs of Solomon, known to be the wisest man who ever lived, by the way. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Verse 2, Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline to help them understand the insights of the wise. Verse 3, their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them to do what is right, just, and fair. Verse 4, these proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Verse 5, let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance, verse 6, by exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. Now I'm going to reiterate this. The purpose of Proverbs is to teach people wisdom, and discipline. To teach people to live successful lives. To help them. To help them to do what is right, just, and fair. The purpose of Proverbs is to give insight. Right? The purpose of Proverbs is to give knowledge and discernment to the young. The purpose of Proverbs is so that the wise become even wiser. The purpose of Proverbs is to receive understanding and guidance through them. Okay? Verse 7. Fear of the Lord is the foundation. Turn to your neighbor and say, the fear of the Lord is the foundation. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, Hutchin Church. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. And as I was meditating on this, I said, I know a lot of people that teach. I know a lot of people that have wisdom. I know a lot of people that are disciplined. I know a lot of people that live successful lives. I know a lot of people that help to do right, right, just and fair things. I know a lot of people that give insight. Hallelujah. I know a lot of people that become wiser. I know a lot of people that have understanding, who receive guidance. A lot is being offered here, and that's all great, but if you don't fear the Lord, <laughs> this doesn't do anything for you. The fear of the Lord is the foundation, hallelujah, and we're going to learn that as we read through here. We learn why the importance to fear the Lord and through Proverbs, we're going to read the importance of how and more of why to fear the Lord. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. All who fear the Lord will hate evil. If you fear the Lord, you will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride. I hope you hate pride. Therefore, I hate arrogance. I hope you hate arrogance, corruption, and perverse speech. Man, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27 in the New King James Version. The fear of the Lord prolongs days. You want your days to be prolonged? Fear the Lord. But the years of the wicked will be shortened. 
Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 and 27 in the New King James Version. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. You want to be having strong confidence? Put your fear in the Lord. And his children will have a place of refuge. Glory to God. Verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Glory to God. You want to live life? Fear the Lord. To the one turn to turn away, to turn one away from the snares of death. Hallelujah. Proverbs 15, 16 in the New Living Translation. And I got my New Living Translation Bible, so I'm going to read it here. It says, better to have little with fear for the Lord than to have great treasure and in inner turmoil. Isn't that true? You see it. People are loaded. They got all this money. Living life. If you don't have the fear of the Lord, you're going to have inner turmoil, no matter how much you have. It's quiet in here. 1533. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes honor. Humble yourselves. Glory to God. Proverbs 19.23 in the New King James Version. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. He will not be visited with evil. You want to have satisfaction? You want to live a satisfactory life? Fear the Lord. Proverbs 22, 4 in the New Living Translation. True humility and, fe and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. 23, 17. Don't envy sinners, but always continue to fear the Lord. And we're going to close with this psalm. 33 verses 8 through 18 in the Amplified Version. I'm going to ask everyone to please read this along with me. Let all the earth fear the Lord, revere and worship Him. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Verse 9. For He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Follow along, Nicole. The Lord brings the counsel of nations to naught. He makes the thoughts and the plans of the people to no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart through all generations. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his heritage. 13. The Lord looks from heaven. He beholds all the sons of men. Spelling place. He looks intently upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, who considers all their doings. No king is saved by the great size and power of his army. A mighty man is not delivered by his much strength. A horse is devoid of value for victory. Neither does he deliver any by his great power. Behold, the Lord's eye is upon those who do what? Who fear him, who revere and worship him with awe, who wait for him and hope. In his mercy and loving kindness, give a shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.